right. Good evening again, everyone. And good I evening, everyone. You all are doing well. And as we are about to start our health talk session for this evening, I want to first welcome you all back to our health talk session. We did have um, uh, some challenge from the past two weeks, so we never um, kept any health talk session from the past two weeks. But we are thankful and grateful that we are able to join this evening. And I want to say for those who are just joining, um, for those new students and for those who um, were here with us and continue to join and to support the Health Talk session, I want to say well done and continue to come out and support the session. All right, so I, I just want to say apology again for that. But normally before a health talk session, we go straight into our um, devotion. But I want to say for those, I think we have two students. And I, 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 I hope Miss Ajari can, can see with me on this one. We have two students who are um, supposed to get um, credit for what they would have done. Um, I think there was a question that they answered. And I, and I believe up to now those two students did not receive the credit and just came back to my mind i think some challenge did happen and the credit was not sent to them and those two students just can please i'm asking after this evening you can um you can message me so that i can have the credit sent to you all right um yes yeah, so please do after after this health talk session this evening you can message me all right, we're going to pray and then we're going to go straight into our health talk session. Let us pray. Great God and our Father in heaven, we are truly grateful once more for your goodness. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy. We want to give you thanks because you are God and God alone. And we pray, Almighty Father, that you would have allowed us to see this another great day, O oh God, and this another great event to which we can share and to hear about our health and wellness. I pray for every student who are joining now and for those who is not here as yet, oh God, I pray that you, that you take them safely. I ask Almighty Father that you be with the presenter who is going to present for this evening. Bless us, oh God, as we go into your word. And I pray, oh God, that you allow somebody's heart to be blessed and someone to come to you in your mighty and awesome name, I pray. Amen. All right, so I will be going to the book. I will be just spending a little time here in the book Deuteronomy and um, I will be reading from chapter 11 and we're going to read from verse 18. We're going to read from verse 18 and we're going to go straight down to, let I see, verse 18, straight down to verse 21 so deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 18 straight down through to 21 deuteronomy is a very profound book and i think this book is we call it the book of instruction and when you read and study the book of deuteronomy deuteronomy book is so wise that when you read it and study it and live out this book you will know how to live out your life on a daily basis where prayer and god is concerned and verse 18 begins it said but thou must eat them before the lord that god in thy place which the lord thy god shall choose thou shall sons and your daughter and thy man servant and thy maid servant and the livest I'm not I'm not reading just a minute mm -hmm. 18 not the right one that 18 no shall in yeah sorry about that so Deuteronomy chapter 11 Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 18 straight through to 21 yes correct so it said, therefore shall you lay up these my word in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign 
upon your hand that they may be as a frontlet between your eyes and you shall teach them to your children and speaking of them when thou sitting in thine house and when thou walkest by the way when thou liest down and when thou rise up and thou shalt write them upon the doorpost of thine heart, of thine house, and upon thy gate. 21 Allah said, that your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children in the land which the Lord sworn unto you, unto your fathers, to give them as the day of heaven upon the earth. And we we'll just read from Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 18 straight through to 21 and as i was saying that deuteronomy is a book of instruction and when you read it and you follow it it helps you to live and it helps you to walk in the right and narrow path you see this book is so powerful that moses when he went down to, to Egypt to deliver God people out of the hand of Pharaoh. God would have a right to the children of Israel instruction that where God is taking them, if they want to be successful in that land, they have to strictly follow the command that God would have laid down and God would have planned out for them. And that's why the book of Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 18 said, Therefore shall you lay these my word in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon thy hand that they may be as a frontlet between your eyes. So what so what Moses is saying here to the people through the writings of God is that to how the word of God is important, you cannot allow it to slip you. You cannot allow the word of God to slip you. You cannot allow it to just to come and it go just like that. What here here what I'm going to let you do for me i want you to write up these words to lay up these words where upon your what upon your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand that they may be a frontlet between your eyes so when you do all this you will never forget because just like when you when you wake up and you have something on your eyes there are something that you that you that you sleep with over your eyes they call it blackout and i know a lot of persons like to sleep with blackout that they when they go into their bed they would have put the blackout over their over their um over their eyes so when you when you wake up in the morning the first thing you will see is a blackout because it will already over your eyes and when you're going to your bed you would have you would have put the black out over your over your eyes so that um nothing cannot really distract you from sleep and exactly when it said like a frontlet i wanted to lay up the laid up the words in your heart and in your soul and let it be like a frontlet between your eyes it simply means that when you wake up the word should be like a frontlet that when you open your eyes each day, each morning, each moment, the first thing should present between your eyes is a word. When you face destruction, when you press to get angry, to get mad and to get miserable, the first thing should be in your eyes is the word of God and it will keep you humble. Because sometimes we as Christians, we forget when we are angry to behave holy we forget when we are angry to say no 
I am a child of God and I'm not going to let this thing get the better of me. And that's why the Bible said, I want you to lay up this word in your heart. Lay it up, not just in your heart, but in your soul. Lay it up just like a frontlet between your eyes. So when you do such things and you walk by the word and you live by the word, despite the challenges come, despite the challenges coming, you will always be on the right side because the word is present before your eyes. Verse 19 said, and you shall teach them diligently. You shall teach them patiently. You shall teach them in a timely manner. You shall teach them your children, speak them when thou sitting in thine house and when thou walkest by the way. So you shall teach what you have. And if you, you, you cannot teach what you don't have and you cannot give what you don't have. And that's the reason why teaching is missing out of the homes. The Bible is missing out of the home. Good parenting is missing out of the home. Because... Really and truly, the parent cannot teach what they don't have. And that's why a children or a child would live what they learn. And that's why the Bible reminds us that you should teach them your children. So meaning that you should teach the word to your children. You cannot have something that is so good that you are living by. And you are not, you are not filling up with bones enough joy to share it. With someone else. And that's why the first place that the Bible says that you should teach it is at your home. The first place you should teach is at your home. And that's why it said, teach them to your children. Teach them to your family. Teach them to your friends. And when you, you have Jesus in your life. And you know that. It's a good thing to have Jesus. And when you have him, all things are passed away and become all things become new. When you have Jesus in your life, you know that when he come, he, he, he don't just come and everything remain the same. But when he comes, he change things. When he comes, he throw out what should not be there and put things what should be there. When he comes, he allow relationship to grow. When he comes, he allow your life to flourish in the way to which he want. And that's the reason why you cannot have Jesus and keep him all by yourself. You have to be able to share the good news. And that's why I call the good news of salvation. And I hear this evening to tell you that if you don't have Jesus and you may have difficulties in your life, and night after night, you may pondering what should you do with your life. You are studying and you don't know what to do. You are ups and downs and you don't know what to do. It's time for you to give Jesus a try. Give him a just said, Lord, it is time for me to give you a to give you a try with my life. I I I I I become a slave in the world of sin for too long. And now I want to just to give you a try in my life. And when you do so. You will never be the same. So he says, speak them when thou sitting in thy house and when thou walking. So, so, so what he's saying is that in everything you do, in everything you do, anywhere you go, you should let the word be your guide. Let the word be your life. And in everything you do, you can show me somebody that live by the word of God, that walk by the word of God, that talk by the word of God. And show me that person and tell me that something great is not happening in that person's life. It always, it always happens when you walk and talk with Jesus in everything you do. Verse 21 said, 
and thou shalt write them upon thy doorpost of thine house and upon thy gate. So simple minute that. So how God wants you to live out his life within your life is that he don't want the word to slip you because you can't live for Jesus and you don't follow and live by his word. So, so he's just saying, I want you to write these words upon your heart, upon your soul, upon your lips. Speak them everywhere you go. When you're sitting, write them upon the doorpost of your gate, upon the doorpost of your house. Write them everywhere you go because the word is so good and so powerful that when you live by the word, great things happen. Great things happen. And that's the reason why I love the word of God. Because when I live by the word of God, when I trust in him, oh mercy, despite the challenges, despite the ups and downs, things always turn out to be good. Things always turn out to be good. But when you don't live by the word, when you don't trust him, when you don't walk by the word, when you're not living according to the word, everything will seem as if it's going downhill. Because nothing in this world is good. Everything that we see here is destruction. And this world is leading to nowhere else but a place of destruction. And that's the reason why. That's the reason why Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 18 straight through to 21. Is reminding us that we should lay up the word of God. In our heart laid up the word of god in our soul laid up the word and let the word be like a frontlet let the word be like a frontlet in our eyes so when we walk and there's a little song there's a little song that said when we walk with the lord in the light of his word what a great thing. We do this. Trust Trust and obey. And there is no other way to be happy in Jesus. But trust and obey. Amen. Thank you, Miss Ajari, for singing along. So, 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 it, so, it is, so it is so good. It is so good. So good and, 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 and joyful. When we can just allow the word to guide us. Because this world is so polluted. Is 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 so sad, it's so sick, it's so mad that if you don't walk by the word, you can lose yourself. You can lose yourself. You can you, you, you can lose your pride. You can lose your dignity. You can lose your character. In just one second, you can lose yourself. And that's the reason why the word of God should be like a front. It should, it should always present. It's not easy. You and I cannot do it of our own. You and I cannot do it of our own. It is only God and God alone that can help us. That can help us to live by his word. And, and he's available. He's available. He said, he said, search for me and you will find. Knock and the door shall open. So, so, so he is available and ready. To just to say, let I help you. Let I help you how to live according to my word. And as I said, I, I have seen Christian fail. I have seen person who don't have a relationship with God fail. I have seen person who trying their utmost best just to walk with Jesus. Challenges come to lick that person off their feet. 
And because they're, they walk by the word and talk by the word and live by the word, they were able to see that this plan, it is not, and it will not bring no good to me. And they were able to stand steadfast and to trust in God. When they throw Daniel in the lion den because Daniel refused to obey the king command. Daniel refused to obey the king command when the king said, hey Daniel, I want you to stop praying. I want you to stop praying to, to your God between these times in the day. And Daniel refused the king command and, and continue like always in the morning, in the evening, and in the afternoon, pray as always. And they set up Daniel and throw Daniel in the lion den. But Daniel, because of the word and because of the relationship that he had with his God, he was able, he was able to be victorious throughout the lion den. So despite the challenges that may come your way, despite the ups and downs, despite the hardship, despite things that come and make you cry and make you feel discouraged, despite all of those things that may come your way, when you live by the word, when you trust in God, your family may not be rich. You may not be rich. You may not have it all easy. You may not have it all well. But when you have Jesus, Jesus gives you a peace of mind that the world don't have. And that's why I said, the peace that I give at you is a peace that the world don't have and it can give you. And the peace that I give you will surpass all understanding let not thy heart be troubled for he believe in god believe also in me that in my father's house are many mansions and if it were not so i would not have told you i go to prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare that place I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there will you be also. And that help us, that help us to understand that Jesus have a better plan, a better future for all of us who want to surrender our life to him for all of us as i close as i close the devotion for this evening i just want to wish you all as i close the devotion as as Ms. ajar goes straight into her presentation for this evening i just want to wish you all i just want to wish you all a successful journey here on this earth that the journey you're on, if you don't have Jesus, is not going to lead to the path to which you want. Because all of us want a successful life. All of us want a successful career, a successful future, a successful family. All of us want that. But sometimes Satan tricks us and thinks that choosing him, that's where success will come. But I'm here to tell you this evening, that if you want a successful family, if you want a successful life, a successful career, a successful future, just choose Jesus and you will never go wrong. Let us pray. Our God and our Father in heaven, we thank you once more, O oh God, for your goodness. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy, O oh God. Thank you for your word for this evening, O oh Father, that you would have shared with your people, Almighty God. 
I ask that you be with them, Jesus. You know the challenges that they have in their life. You know that, oh God, that they can't do all this on their own, almighty God. So I ask, almighty Father, that you visit them. Wherever they are at this moment, oh God, you visit them, you touch them. From the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, almighty God. Remove everything that is unlike you, that is in their life, almighty Father. Oh God, give them a special touch. Give them a special anointing, oh God. Give them that touch, almighty Jesus, so that their life can be transformed. Their life can be changed to a renewedness one with you, almighty God. Have your way in our life even now. Bless us continually. In your mighty and awesome name I pray. Amen. And amen. All right. So that's it for our devotion for this evening. I want to say once more for those who just joined, welcome. And I hope that you will have a wonderful evening here um, in this great and uh, some um, health talk session. Uh, our, present, our presenter for this evening is Ms. Ajari, and she is a one who, from, from this term start, she uh, would have started and she would have done a wonderful and continue to do a wonderful and a great job. And I know for, for this evening, she would do something great. And I know for sure that all of us will learn from this presentation. All right, so Miss Ajari, um, you can you can go ahead. You can go ahead now and you can um you can begin. All right. Um, good evening, everyone. And uh, thank you, Mr. Davis, for the opportunity. I am very, very grateful. Amen, amen. I'm trying to share the slide. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it. All right, I want to try and now. Uh, where do we normally go again? Uh, uh, yeah, click on that, click on, click on slides. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. You can see um, it very well now. No, it, it need to it need to be bigger. Bigger? Um, yes. I've only seen that on half of the screen. It's bold on my side, you know. Good on your side. Bold. It's a right, click, on, click on click on start slideshow. Is the start slideshow? I'm coming last week. This is that slideshow. I'm trying to take it back to. Um, you can see it better now. Uh, no, not seeing it better. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to take it back. How about this? All right, I'm not seeing it. You click on from the beginning slide. Okay, so. Oh, it's a slideshow from the beginning. Yes, from the beginning. That's what I click on. Mm, but I'm not, see it's, it's still small. Click on, click on the other one. Click on the I, other one. I but now. Same. Click on the other one. From the beginning slide. Yeah. 
from current slide yeah current slide it's okay now no uh log out and do it again stop sharing all right share it again now All right, um, click from the beginning now and then you can expand it. Click, uh, click now. I bought it now. Uh, I'm not giving. I'm not sure what's wrong. You know, this is the same way I normally share before. All right, all right, all right. Go ahead and present. Don't let that stop you. Maybe, maybe I press. Uh, Something, I'm not sure. So you're saying the full, full screen or you're still seeing my computer? I'm, I'm still seeing your computer. And it is full screen at my end. So what's happening? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it may can be the internet or something. But go ahead, present. Don't worry yourself. Present like that. All right. Uh -huh. But when I change the slide, you see the change? It, no, change it. Let's change it. Anyone else? Anyone is, else is seeing the, the change? When Yes, so I'm seeing the change when you click. Yes. All right. I'm not sure where the problem is. It's the same way we've been sharing. So I think we've once discussed this topic, but I there is a program, there's an intervention coming up, so I deem it fit to share it again. And um, to see how well it can benefit us. All right, so this evening we'll be talking about cervical cancer. As we all know that there are different forms of cancer. We have breast cancer. We have There's no part of the body that cancer cannot affect. But this evening we'll be discussing cervical cancer. And uh, we have the understanding that most cancers, except prostate cancer, affect the women. And I can say that the larger, uh, largest population that we have this evening is more about women. And you know, we are the backbone of the home. So we need to stay healthy to take care of ourselves, to take care of our, our husband and to take care of our children in particular. So we'll be discussing on cervical cancer and what to do. All right, so like you know, my name is Odwaya Ajayi and I'll be your presenter for today. So we want to talk about introduction, that cervical cancer is the largest, most common cancer in women. It's the largest, most common cancer in women in uh, worldwide. So cervical cancer is not only restricted to Jamaica. Baby. Baby. Sorry. So cervical cancer is not only restricted to women in Jamaica, but cervical cancer is all over. So it's not about uh, how bad you might have spent your youth, even though it's part of it, but it, it's all over. It's got across. So cervical cancer is a disease that develops quite slowly and begins with... Uh, precancerous condition known as dyspepsia. So it starts slowly, it will start like cancer. Most often, by the time we discover cervical cancer, it's already at stage four. Because it, do, it, it usually don't start as cancer. You just have one complaint or the other, and they will tell you to go to the sexually transmitted infection clinic. You say, me can't bother, me can't manage. 
or maybe you even got there you are placed on a particular treatment and you don't follow it up so dyspepsia is an early is easily detected in a routine pap smear and it's completely treatable you see the way it started is treatable so that you are having dyspepsia does not mean that oh that is the end of life and the only way whereby you can discover this is through pap smear and you know cervix cervix is is the mouth of the place that carries your baby so it's not something you see every day so because we don't see it every day some of us don't pay attention to it and by the time we are told to come for pap smear we don't give an importance to it so cervical cancer is a malignant tumor deriving from cells of the cervix like we have said as many of us that don't know what cervix is you know that your baby is in the womb or the uterus the mouth of the uterus is called the cervix all right you can see you can see the way the the this picture position the end you can see the picture better Can we see it's good good i'm trying to enlarge hello can you hear me yeah hearing you oh all right so so you can see that you can see the the fallopian tube where the egg passed through coming to the uterus so the tail end this side this is this side is where the, the 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 mouth of the cervix is so like we have said that cervical cancer is a malign is um is a malignancy that originated from the cell of the cervix that is the narrow end of the uterus where it connects to the vagina experts from the top cervical cancer treatment hospital that is in not there suggest that the malignancy is usually seen in people who are exposed to human papilloma virus so cervical cancer is an abnormal cell it spreads deeply into the cervix like i said because it's not outside because it's not what we see day to day you know like breast cancer by the time you see that the breast is given issue you will be able to see it quickly because it's outside. So at times we discover breast cancer earlier than cervical cancer. But cervical cancer is way inside. If we don't pay it any mind, everything will continue to, to rot in or to spoil over there until by the time you now start having the full manifestation, by that time is no longer curable. So it says if abnormal cells spread deeper into the cervix or to other tissue or organs the disease is then called cervical cancer or invasive cervical cancer occurs more often in women over the age of 40. slightly over 20 percent are diagnosed when over 65. So still talking about cervical cancer, it's also the most common gynecological malignancy. It's the second worldwide, but it's the most common gynecological malignancy. The most common tumor type is squamous cell carcinoma. And it, it contains about 80% of the cells of the abdomen of abnormal growth. A pap smear is only a screening test. So when you do pap smear and they tell you that there is issue and they tell you to do further tests, don't say, but me done the test already, no, no. Pap smear is screening. Pap smear don't confirm cervical cancer. So a definite diagnosis for cervical cancer requires a tumor biopsy. So when you do pap smear and you get the result and the result is not too good, the nurse, or the midwives will give you a call and they will send you to the lab to do a biopsy radiation and operation are both effective treatment that is if it is discovered early 
goals of treatment is to cure except for stage four remember i told you that because it's in internal people don't even discover it, it reached stage four and once it is stage four we can only give such a patient palliative treatment it cannot be cured except by the grace of god all right moving along what are the causes and the symptoms of cervical cancer one the cause of cervical cancer are not exact Doctors have not yet found the real cause of it. However, the women's medical history and sexual habit can be a big cause in developing cervical cancer. What do we mean? The women's medical history, they may have it in the family. It could run in the family. Then the sexual habit, you have uh, three children and you have three baby father. Mind you, the same baby father is sleeping with another person. And that another person is sleeping with another person. So before you know it, maybe the, the, it, it would have been like transmitted for like the fourth or the fifth or the sixth person. And the contact keep going on until it gets to you. So your sexual habits may put you at risk of contacting cervical cancer. And some of us, while we are young and we believe we are young and restless, we move up and down sexually on safe sex, it could lead to uh, a future problem. So sexual habits can be a big, you see, a big cause in developing cervical cancer. I tell persons, if you don't trust your partner, there is no crime in using condom, even though it fails. And when you see any, at times, we may not be able to, maybe because of the relationship we have built, if your partner had gone for a long time, you are not so sure of what he or she had done, and he come back to you, you didn't protect yourself. If you start seeing any signs, maybe discharge or foul smell, quickly report. Remember, cervical cancer did not start as a cervical cancer. It started in a way that can be treated, but when you don't pay it any mind, then it's aggravated. Then also, an HPV infection may be another big cause of cervical cancer. So if your partner, you know that this uh, HPV infection is transmitted from male to female. And it's so unfortunate that the female manifests it more. So in a situation whereby maybe your partner had hpv infection you as a female should make sure you go for the treatment as quick as possible i said it's another big cause of cervical cancer we have some risk factors like hpv infection like lack of pump smear some of us you know that by standard when you come for your six weeks check as a delivered mother yeah, when they give your baby the first, uh, the second set of vaccine, you are expected to do your pap smear. But some of us come, some of us come uh, with um, our period might have returned by the time we come at six weeks, and they, they, once you are menstruating, we can't do pap smear because apparently it is a blood stain a sample we will get. So when they give you another date, by that time, your picnic will do well already. You know, nothing like guana. One minute, please. I'll call you back. So at that moment, your picnic will do fine. So you, you, you didn't even remember that the nurse told you to come back because when you came, you were already menstruating. And some of us, you know it was said that by age 40, you are expected to do your pap smear regularly because that is the only way we can discover if anything is wrong with your cervix. Then also weakened immune system. What do I mean? If a patient is HIV positive already, there is tendency to develop cervical cancer along the line because the immune system, are down. there are so many, the, the white blood cell, is, is very high trying to is low rather trying to fight the the infection in the body so any other thing can creep in then age when you're greater than 40 you're expected to do your there's tendency to develop cervical cancer when you smoke 
and you smoke a lot, any harmful act of smoking can also predispose you. It not necessarily be the cause, but it can predispose you to cervical cancer. Then being on birth control for a very long time, seldomly. Because even if you're on birth control, you can still do your checks. And if you do it and you treat it, then it won't happen. So, like we have said earlier, that is the most common cause of cancer-related morbidity, morbidity and mortality among women in developing country. And you know that Jamaica is still part of developing country. 371, 200 new cases annually with a 50% mortality rate. You see, like I told you, by the time we discover, it's already at stage four. And we cannot manage stage four. So you, before you know it, they will die. By the time you even know that this thing is incurable, there's no way, then death is closer. Past 50 years, 75% decrease in incidence and mo mortality in developed country due to pap smear. And that is why we are preaching pap smear for you at this season. And the dictation of precursors lesion and early stage cancers however in the united states invasive cervical cancer remain the cause of death for almost four thousand women you see that you did not see men here so it's all about us women each year approximately 1.3 percent of cancer deaths in women squamous sorry Squamous cell carcinoma accounts for approximately 80% of cervical cancer and adenocarcinoma takes the remaining 15%. All right, moving along, we have two stage, the early stage, the late stage, maybe no sign or symptoms. Remember I told you the only way you can find out if anything is wrong with your cervix is through pap smear. Then the latter stage, we have the abnormal bleeding, or discharge from vagina, then we could have, such a patient could have pain, pain during sex. And if you look at this picture, let me, you can see a normal front view, the uterus, the cervix, and the vagina. You can see this first one, how the cervix viewed, front view. You can see how round and pink it is. But now, this is the early stage of the cancer you can see that the surroundings they are already getting more brighter see this third one you can see the changes that is not as pink as the first one and by the time the whole thing has reached stage 2b you can see that the old cervical horse the mouth everything is like a fresh wound now and you can see the picture up here you can see that it's already moving into the womb and eating up the womb. Even though it looks uh, patchy, patchy outside here, but it's already traveling into the womb. So those are the stages of cervical cancer. All right, so we talk about the awareness month. The risk factor for cervical cancer. One, absence of vaccination. Now, uh, thank God for technology. Thank God for increase in medical knowledge. We have vaccines for cervical cancer, which we call HPV vaccine. So to reduce this risk, you, you are expected to take HPV vaccine. He said by the, one of the risk factors is absence of HPV vaccine. So to reduce the risk, you have to take your HPV vaccine. Two, absence of cervical cancer screening or women engaging in sexual activity. We have talked about that. So you are expected to do your screening, which is the pap smear. Then also history of vulval vagina or ana dyspepsia if we have a vagina ana or vulva dyspepsia then we should know that we should talk then immunosuppressive patient i told you 
then um anybody smoking cigarettes is also vulnerable all right so now taking you to the guideline of when you should be screened ah uh, for women that are under 21 is not recommended but you know in this uh generation we've haven't we've had 13 year old given back we've had 15 year old given back so if you are a nolly para that is you've never been pregnant you've had, never had a baby under 21 you don't have business with pap smear but even if you are 13 and you already have a baby or you are sexually active then you qualify to do a pap smear then 21 to 29 because we believe that we are still on the elder side you are expected to do your pap smear every three years 30 to 65 pap smear test hpv test every five years then when you are above 65 we believe that everything has shrink up so we can't bother you so it's not being recommended then let's say maybe you have issue with fibroid you've removed fibroid before and you have removed your womb there's something we call total abdominal hysterectomy you remove everything then you there's there's no cervix to to take any sample from so hysterectomy from disease or other precancerous or cancer then you don't need pap smear hpv test indicated for triage of special abdominal results and follow up for test for the high grade lesion not to be used as a cold test or standalone for screening therefore 65 women who remain at risk of invasive cervical cancer may be screened beyond age 65. all right so cervical cancer prevention now education about early symptoms of cervical cancers avoid risk factor like we said multiple sexual partner could be a risk factor not doing your past smell could be a risk factor uh, age could be a risk factor then screening and vaccination all right so now we want to still talk about one of the mode of prevention we talk about the human papilloma virus human papilloma virus vaccine if every female adhere to the current HPV vaccination program, the total number of female deaths from cervical cancer globally will drop by hundreds of thousands each year. All right. So we want to talk about the types of treatment. You can start with surgery. And that is what I was saying. That you can decide to remove the womb. Maybe you've delivered all what you want to deliver. And the womb now is no more longer useful for you you can decide to take it out then radiotherapy by the time you discover they start putting you on the machine to see then there is chemotherapy then we have there is a targeted therapy cryotherapy and thermocoagulation so these are the method by which cervical cancer can be treated but like i tell you once it is stage four it's very difficult so we say don't let cervical cancer stop you get vaccinated get screened it is time to end cervical cancer by the time you get to the female world at jubilee there is a word there that's just purely for cervical cancer you will understand better and you will appreciate the reason why we keep shouting and telling us that get vaccinated and get screened when you are screened you will be able to know if there is any problem and i'm announcing to you as many of us that had young girls and boys from the age of 9 to 14 we give them one dose of hpv vaccine while for girls from the age of 9 to 26 it is free for the age of 9 to 26 for uh girls but for boys from the age of nine to 14 is also free so if we have some of our teenagers that even they may not have even given back to babies you know but you know they're sexually active or they sleep around which we are trusting god for the best but until then take them to the nearest health center or go and get a date and get the hpv 
uh, vaccine given. You know, we still, we still start school medical, back to school business. By the time they finish the third uh, semester, please have it at the back of your mind. Some Jamaicans believe that they are using the vaccine to reduce fertility rates. No, it is not true. People are still giving back to their children. They still are breed. But we just want to reduce the rate at which cervical cancer is killing our women. I'm making an announcement. I'm at Comprehensive Health Center. As many of us that are in Kingston, please, it's free, you know. So that we are inviting you to our cervical cancer screening and awareness. It's April 18, right down the date. It's from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So there will be egg talk. There will be cervical screening and pap smear. There will be breast examination. You can see there will be HPV vaccine for male age 9 to 14 and female age 9 to 26. Venue, the Comprehensive Health Center, 55 Slipen Road, Kingston 5. Take charge of your life with free cervical screening. And with free cervical screening and invaluable information so early dictation save life don't miss it and even if you are not in kingston you're in uh saint catherine or you're in any nearby uh parish and you can make a date with us on, on the 18th of april please come to be vaccinated if you have some of our young men, bring them. Young ladies, bring them from age 9 to 26 for female, age 9 to 14 for male. You as an adult that you are in your reproductive year, come and do your pap smear and come and... So that if anything, we can easily dictate it and we can always take care of you before it's reached the stage four and i say again the vaccine is hpv vaccine so thank you for listening and god bless all right thank you miss ajari for your uh, wonderful presentation and i i hope that you all would have would have listened and learned from the um presentation on cervical cancer all right so miss adjo i was saying that they would have been a screen there at um kph right comprehensive is on the same line with um yeah comprehensive health center okay good so yes. if, person, if person want to go you can um you can go if you're where if you know where you can um find once you know public kph is called public is yes. on the same line with so public. good so right at kph same line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you can you can um you can go uh remind us of the date april 18 That's 18th april. of april good so you yeah. can you can plan and you can go all right, so as we close our presentation for this evening, I want to thank you all for coming. And I hope that I see you all join next week, Tuesday. The presentation, Health Talk session is always on Tuesday of each week. So the next one is on Tuesday. See you all. And thank you once more, Mr. Ajari. And I hope that you had a wonderful and a great rest of the evening. All right, take care, everyone, and have a wonderful night.